Senator Joni Ernst of Iowa gave the Republican response to Obama's State of the Union. It was just as silly as you would expect it to be. We felt them in Red Oak, the little town in southwestern Iowa where I grew up and am still proud to call home today. As a young girl, I plowed the fields of our family farm. I worked construction with my dad. To save for college, I worked the morning biscuit line at Hardee's. We were raised to live simply, not to waste. It was a lesson my mother taught me every rainy morning. You see, growing up, I had only one good pair of shoes. So on rainy school days, my mom would slip plastic bread bags over them to keep them dry. But I was never embarrassed because the school bus would be filled with rows and rows of young Iowans with bread bags slipped over their feet. And how exactly would Republican policies have helped you? Notice something about all of the Republican responses. They always bring it back to them. It's always about a personal story or an anecdote or a platitude or a cliche. When I was growing up, I plowed fields, and I worked the biscuit line at Hardee's, and I wasn't able to afford shoes, so vote Republican. Which party is more likely to come up with some sort of a social program that might give little kids that don't have shoes, shoes? Hmm. I would guess the Democrats, because don't the Republicans have a saying that they use all the time, which goes a little something like this? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. The problem with that, Republicans, is sometimes people don't have boots. You gotta have boots to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, don't you? So, really, if anything, what she's doing is she's making an argument for democratic policies without even realizing it. And this, like, embracing of the idea that, you know, everybody in your town apparently couldn't afford shoes... Again, if anything, that's an argument for social programs. That's an argument for an FDR-style system to come in there and to give everybody an equal opportunity. It's amazing to me that they don't see these things. Again, with them, uh, policy is largely irrelevant, and all it's about is, let me tell them about how you're supposed to save money and don't waste money, yeah! As if, like, you know, Democrats, or we wake up in the morning and go, you know what I really should do? Spend three times what's in my bank account. They, it's this absolute stereotype of Democrats. No, I have news for you, Republicans. Every American, everybody wakes up and they all think about, hey, my finances, hey, uh, how much am I making at my job? Let me make a budget. Let me think about this stuff. I mean, the idea that you just assume condescendingly that like, well, I'm a, a, a responsible person who tries to not waste all my money. The, the assumption that everybody else does, it just shows that you're super myopic and you're just silly. But she's not done yet. That's why the new Republican majority you elected started by reforming Congress to make it function again. We'll also keep fighting to repeal and replace a health care law that's hurt so many hardworking families. Just look at my parents and grandparents. They had very little to call their own except the sweat on their brow and the dirt on their hands. But they worked. They sacrificed, and they dreamed big dreams for their children and grandchildren. And because they did, an ordinary Iowan like me has had some truly extraordinary opportunities. Because they showed me that you don't need to come from wealth or privilege to make a difference. You just need the freedom to dream big and a whole lot of hard work. The new Republican Congress you elected is working to make Washington understand that, too. And with a little cooperation from the president, we can get Washington working again. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you tonight. May God bless this great country of ours, the brave Americans serving in uniform on our behalf, and you, the hardworking men and women who make the United States of America the greatest nation the world has ever known. I hate everything about it. 
I hate everything about it. Even the end, like the, the uber over-the-top patriotism, and to be clear, Democrats do this all the time, too. This, we're the greatest country that ever existed, ever, in every way, shape, and form. <laughs> Stop with the emotional horse shit. Treat us like adults, man. I mean, you do know things are measured. You do know that you can quantify these things, and science exists, and studies exist, and of course what we found is that on in many areas, in most areas, we are nowhere near number one. Our healthcare system is ranked number 37. Our middle class in the United States is no longer number one. You'd find that in Canada, and you'd find that in the, the social democracies in the Scandinavian region. I mean, you name the issue, and you'll see how we're not number one, except in military spending and uh, uh, number of people in prison. So enough of it. We're the best and God ordained us. Yeah. I always like to think, uh, imagine if we as Americans were watching a, a similar speech in a different country where they said shit like this. How would we feel? We would honestly think it's the goofiest fucking shit we've ever seen. If they were, if somebody on Iranian TV was giving a speech about, and the Iranian people in the Iranian nation, it's the greatest country that ever existed in the history of forever and ever. Yeah! We'd be like, that doesn't even make sense. What do you mean? How? How are you the best? By what criteria? Are you even going to give a criteria? Are you just going to uh, suck everybody's dick in your entire country? Is that how this works? If they gave that speech in Australia, if they gave that speech in New Guinea, I mean, we'd be like, Stop! You just sound stupid, but somehow when we do it, it's like, no, 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 it's okay, because it's true about us. If you take a snapshot throughout history at any given time, whoever the, the superpower is at that point in time, they're going to say that about themselves, right? So back during the days of the Roman Empire, Rome is the greatest ever! The Greek Empire, Greece is the greatest ever! Uh, the Malian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, I mean, this will never end, we're the best ever! No, none of you know what the fuck you're talking about. Can we just be rational about this shit as opposed to blowing smoke up everybody's ass? And then, look, all of the so-called policy substance or lack thereof in her speech, uh, let me list it off for you. It was only like a, a nine-minute or ten-minute speech. Uh, she said she brought up the TPP. Great, so you want to uh, send more American jobs overseas, stay classy. And again, Obama wants to do that too, so on that front, both the Democrats and the Republicans suck. Keystone XL. She's like, our jobs plan is Keystone. Really? That's a shitty jobs plan. Have you not seen the studies that say that it would create only 35 permanent jobs? 35. Never mind the fact that it would contribute to uh, climate change tremendously. It would increase pollution. The oil would not lower the uh, cost of oil or gas in America because we ship it uh, overseas. That it's not... The American people aren't going to get rich off of it, but private interests are going to get rich off of it. All these things that make it not a good idea, but no, that's their jobs plan. Uh, she goes on to say, cut taxes for the rich, and she goes on to uh, talk about war and how that's a good thing. So there's your substance, or no substance at all, I should say. And also, uh, I love the line, uh, the Republicans have reformed Congress in like the three and a half days that we've been in control. Really? How so? Give me one example of how you did that. It's just something, see, that's what you do. To get to wait until you get to your personal anecdotes and your cliches and your personal stories, you just do fillers with bullshit. So that's just, she's just building up to tell another personal story. So she's like, the Republicans have totally fixed everything about Congress ever, and we've reformed it. Examples? No, crickets, of course not. And then, uh, of course, repeal Obamacare. Or... You can't have a Republican speech or talk or discussion or anything without some dunce saying repeal Obamacare. As if it hasn't been tried 54 times already, and as if Obama wouldn't veto it the second it hits his goddamn desk. And by the way, Obamacare has helped many, many people. For you to say we're going to take that away, you would make the U.S. healthcare system much, much worse. And then finally, um, probably the most important point. When she talks about, you know, my grandparents, they had nothing but the sweat on their brow. They worked really, really hard. Okay, and I commend them for that, but pretty much everybody has grandparents who did that and has parents who did that, and they're doing it right now. So if you really do care about these people as you're pretending to do right now, 
then why not make the minimum wage a living wage, for example? So you're saying, yes, just work hard and, and everything will be okay, but what about the people who do bust their ass day in and day out, and the minimum wage is still not a living wage, so they work a full-time job and they don't make enough money to survive. They don't make enough money to pay the bills. They don't make enough money to uh, you know, make sure that the lights stay on and pay for food for their kids and whatnot. Why not make the minimum wage a living wage if you really do care about these people, which you don't, which is why you don't actually want to do that. And if you care so much about these hardworking Americans, then maybe you should do something to, I don't know, make sure we never have a medical bankruptcy in America again. I mean, that's the number one cause of bankruptcy in America is medical bills. And she's trying to repeal the one thing that's at least trying to address that problem or similar problems. But that's the thing. Republicans are all talk. All talk and personal anecdotes and cliches and stories and platitudes. And when it comes to actual policy substance, there's nothing there. 